All right, guys. Um, here's the hitch, and I'm just using a standard. It's a, it's a, what do they call an A-frame hitch? It's a 50 degree. Um, this is this is standard completely. Uh, you find it in any store that sells this kind of stuff. But what I'm using for the hitch itself, you know, this is just laid up here. I'm using it like sawhorses, and I'm using three-inch channel, three point five pound per foot that's how they classify that stuff now I just wanted to show you how I set it up um, I'll give you the dimensions well I can give them to you now but both of these two pieces are 62 inches long um, and what that's gonna get us and you'll see when we go to set that up is I'm gonna be able to stay four feet in f from edge of hitch to front of trailer frame uh, it sounds a little confusing, I know, but I just wanted to show you before I tack this up. Um, I have it clamped both flat on the bottom and flat on the sides. And I'm going to want to put a few bit good tacks on there and just to keep that so I don't have to screw around trying to keep that in place. This will all be one big A-frame unit. Then all I have to do, oh, I'll show you this too. Um, I didn't cut any angles, I didn't know what it would be right now. So what I did was I took a straight edge across and, and, and you know basically just butted it up to both sides here. And then I drew my line. That is going to be butted right up into here. So I can get nice and flat and everything should get welded together nice and smooth. So I just wanted to show you that. Make sure you got everything nice and tight, uh, centered. I mean, as far as the same amount, the same amount from here sticking out on both sides. That way everything's nice and square. I'm going to go ahead and tack this up, and then we'll put this on the trailer. Okay, now I have, this is all tacked up. Like I said, I double checked all the dimensions, everything's good. I cut my straight line here so this, this would get butted up along this rail. It's going to get welded, obviously, to here. It's going to get welded to here. And then when I put my floor in, now, those two alone ought to be enough. I'm ha I happen to be using a steel floor, so I'm also going to weld to there. If you were using wood, it's no big deal. Um, there, this is plenty, like I said, because you're not having, you don't want all your weight on the tongue. Um, really, you should be able to, you know, it might be heavy, but you should be able to almost lift, lift the tongue up by yourself. Um, unless, you know, your a car trailer is different, that's got two axles and it's just, it doesn't pivot like that. But um, I have this centered. Um, basically, I took this dimension whatever that came out to be. And I took the outside frame dimension, and I subtracted and divide by two, gave me three and a quarter from each end of the frame in. So I have that perfectly that way. Now a good way to check this is to pick a point on your axle. I happen to, I don't know if you can see this or not. Um, I'm gonna pick this axle plate point. You'll see it when I come over to the other side but I'm going to pull my tape there and I'm going right to dead center of this mechanism bolt here. It's a, it's a good reference. Um, so I have nine foot, three eighths of an inch. Now I'm going to pull my tape from the same point. I know it's hard to see on this video, but trust me, there's a square plate there that I can use that's close enough. And I've got nine foot five sixteenths. So I'm off by a sixteenth of an inch. Big deal. It's not gonna matter. This thing, this thing's gonna trailer like a dream. Um, so everything's square, that's the whole point. If you have everything square to start with, everything just it makes it so much smoother on down the line. If you didn't have this square, I'd run into all kinds of problems and we'd have to adjust make one of these legs longer than the other and uh, it's kind of a pain. 
Uh, you can also cross-reference, you know, I, I measured from corner of frame. I did all that, triple checked everything, it all looks good. So basically, we're gonna do some welding. This is critical welding too, by the way. Um, <laughs> obviously, oh also, don't forget, when you mount this, make sure this is upside down when your trailer is upside down. Um, it's real easy to forget about little things like that. And then you go to flip the trailer over and your hitch is upside down. you got to cut everything apart. Um, as far as the hitch goes, it's a, it, I made it for a two inch ball. So um, I'm basically going to tack this all up. And now I'm at the point where I'm ready to weld everything while this thing is upside down. So I'm going to weld everything up. Now I want to skip around. Like I'll weld a little bit here, then I'll start welding over there. Jump around, that way you're not just pouring heat all into you know one spot. By the time I get back over to this area, this will cool down a little bit. So that's what you want to do when you're welding and that way things aren't twisting and warping. Um, it's going to move a little bit, but that's no big deal. Um, if you want, if you feel like you need more welding surface, you could put gussets in here. Um, you know, cut yourself some plate. I may, I, I'm not going to do that because, like I said, I'm going to have sheet metal on here. And I'm, I'm just going to stitch it to the sheet metal so it'll be welded to the floor and the framework. Um, but, you know suit yourself if, you, if you're using wood might not be a bad idea to put a little extra something in just for more welding surface you don't need any more beef on the trailer uh, the only reason for the gussets would be to get more weld from the hitch to the trailer so um, yeah I'm gonna weld it up and then we're gonna flip this thing over